Hi friends, welcome to Ufa Studies YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to discuss about how to work with data using Spark data frames. In our previous videos, we have discussed about notebooks in Fabric. Now, within the Fabric, when you are working with the notebooks, you take the data and put it in a data frames. We have seen that in our last video. So now, how to work with that data? That is what we are going to focus in this video. So for this video, let's assume I have a products.csv file with some information like a product ID, product name, category and list price. So you know that how to upload that file into the lake house in our previous video. So watch the previous video before watching this so that you will get a most out of it. So let's take that file and load the data into the data frame uh, using the infer schema mechanism. So when I say infer schema mechanism, so I will be simply loading this file data into the data frame. I am not going to define any data types. So data types and column names will automatically will come. So that is called inferring a schema. That means uh, taking a schema, that means column names along with the data types, even though you haven't provided them. So let me see that. So if I go to the browser, I have a fabric. I have a workspace called my workspace here. So I have this lake house called sample lake house. So let me open this lake house first. So when I click that, it will open a lake house here. So if I go to the data folder here, right, there are two files here. You see, there is a file called products.csv and there is a file called products1.csv. So with these two files, we are going to work. So firstly, let's focus on this products.csv file. So if I go inside the products.csv file, you can clearly see that I have some data there. And if you see here, I have their product ID, product name, category, list price in the first row of the CSV file. It means like a Excel file, right? Comma separated file. And rest of the rows are actually data, right? So now let me load this data into the data frame. So this is a notebook, uh, this is a lake house, right? So I can use this open notebook option and new notebook option that will actually open a notebook by connecting with lake house. You, you seen this also in the previous video. So once I have this notebook, you can see that this notebook is connected with a lake house and if under the lake house name is sample lake house, you can see there and you have the data folder also. And when I go inside the data folder, I will see my products.csv file as well. So if I go inside of it, I can see products.csv file. So what I wanted to do is, so I wanted to take this file and load it to a data frame. And by default, if you observe, this notebook is connected with a PySpark uh, with a Python as a default language. So I can write my PySpark code here. Okay. So now here, so let me zoom this little bit and let me minimize this here. So let, let me minimize even these two. Okay. So here, let me write a code. So in PySpark, there is something called spark.read.load function that helps to load the data from the files. So I can give the path first here. And in the path, I as I said, it's inside the files folder, data folder products.csv and if you remember the first row is header in it so I can say header equals to true okay uh, and also actually I have to tell one thing here what is the format of the file right so it's a CSV file format and the header is true so this entire piece of code will create a data frame and load the data into the data frame so I can give a name for it, maybe like a PRD underscore DF. That is a data frame name and all the data will get loaded into the data frame. So once it get loaded there, I can use a display function to show that PRD hyphen data frame. And once it done, so let me hit this run cell button to execute it and see the results here. Great. You can see that query executed successfully. And if you can observe this here, I can see all my 10 rows which I have in a CSV file and also if you observe I got the column names also. The first row of the CSV file considered as a column names. Not only that, the data type for every column also inferred automatically by Spark. So to prove that what I can do here is, so let me use this PRD underscore data frame dot. There is something called print schema function. And when I hit the shift enter button to rerun this cell, I should see schema as well. So when I scroll down here, you see that it gives me all the column names along with the data types too. 
so how the data types came spark what it does is it, it will automatically infer the data types for the columns okay when you don't provide but there is an option to explicitly provide that as well so if you see here right if you see this example see using a structure type you can create a structure type object and that structure type object you can use it as a schema when you are reading the file so that time what will happen inside the structure type whatever the structure fields you given along with the data types so that entire column names and data types will become the schema of your data and it will show the data frame accordingly so i can prove you that so to show you this right so let me go back to our um, uh, lake house so if i go back to my lake house sample lake house here and when i go back to the data there is one more file called products1.csv so if i go inside this file you see that the first the every row here is a data we don't see that column names here so let's take this file for our sampling purpose and let's try to add the schema on top of it explicitly okay so to do that what i'm going to do let me go back to my notebook and here right so firstly right i have to create the schema so for that structure type and structure fields i have to use so for that right first i have to import some libraries pyspark dot sql dot types uh, from this library import everything okay that means all the data types then from pyspark dot sql dot functions import everything okay so because we have to use this structure type class and we have to create an object for it and to create an object for it as you can see the intelligence i have to use the structure field here okay so to use the structure field so let's use a structure field inside of it in an array so then here so let me use the structure type sorry structure field and to the structure field if you observe i have to give the column name and i have to give the data type of the column so what i can do maybe first column name i want to give like a product id okay p underscore id right and uh, this is if you see the data in my file right these are all integers right so let me give the data type also as integer here right so i can take integer type class here so this is one field comma then let me copy this entire thing and add a further more columns as well one two three four so first column is product id second column name i want to name it like p underscore name that is a product name and uh, it, this should be like a string type so i will use a string type here then product category so p underscore category column that's what i will give and this will i will give it like a string type and then finally product list price so for this uh, if you observe the values here it's like actually like a float values so i can use maybe float type right so this entire thing i will try to save it in something called a df underscore schema that means data for data frame schema okay so maybe i will name it that way and once i have a schema so i will use this park dot read dot uh, then maybe the same load function then here i can use the path equals to so under files under data folder there is something called products one dot csv that's where i don't have a schema and then the format of the file i can use it like a csv okay so i can use a csv format then what i wanted to do is i want to use a schema and i can pass my data frame schema here uh, i think that's it right i think we are good so let's let me take all this data into a data frame called df and then let me display the data frame also display the data frame schema to using the print schema function when i hit a shift enter to run this particular cell you can see that cell is running it here and uh, let's wait for the results to come you can see the results came and we got all the columns as well as we decided you can clearly see them and also if i scroll down you can clearly see the data types what we have defined and the column names what we have defined right so everything works perfectly so we can either infer the schema when you are working with the data in the data frames or we can explicitly add the schema to not only that 
we can actually apply some kind of a data manipulations on top of the data. So once you have data in the data frame, you can use dot any function name to perform any kind of a manipulation. It's like a executing queries in SQL, right? For example, I want to take only two column names there. So then I can use a select function on top of it and mention my column names. It will the data frame will return in the same way. So what I mean to say is, so if I go back to my notebook, so uh, the DF data frame contains this data, right? So now from this data frame, I was see dot select. So it's like a manipulating data using some functions. So here I will tell only take the uh, maybe p underscore id column, then p underscore name column and uh, this entire thing I can store it in some other data frame called df1 and then display that or maybe I can use a display function directly around it uh, to display the information. So when I execute this, this time it will actually it, it won't change this data frame called df. It will actually create one more data frame and that data frame is getting displayed here. So p underscore id p underscore name right to to prove that, so I am using a display function to display data frame as well, uh, post using the manipulation here. So when I hit the shift enter now, you can see that the first line of the code returned only two and the second line will return all the other columns as well. Because whatever the manipulation function you have applied there, it will actually create a new data frame. It won't alter the existing one. Okay. So not only that, we can actually chain the functionalities. For example, from the data frame, so let me select. So I wanted to select product ID column and also maybe P underscore name column and also maybe P underscore category column. So when I execute this, so let me use a dot show function. Even that helps to show the results. When I execute this, I got three columns. That is fine. So what I want to do, I want to chain one more manipulation here where after taking the three columns, maybe, maybe what I want to do, I want to filter the data uh, based upon the uh, data frame dot p underscore category column value equals to uh, kitchen. Okay, so wherever kitchen category type util utilities are there, only get that. And finally, I can use a show function to show that. And if you see the two manipulation, see we got the data only for the kitchen category items because we have applied uh, one more manipulation there using a dot where function okay so not only that you can also apply a group by kind of a step as well like if you are if you are seeing it here so selecting two columns but then grouping by category as well and then getting a count out of it right so maybe category wise how many products we have get that count so in that case what we have to do it here is so the same code right what i was shown so firstly select the columns and maybe select the columns like a p underscore id underscore then p underscore category column okay then maybe on top of that i want to group by right so i want to group by maybe p underscore category column and when i perform the group by i want to take the count right so that's what it does and then finally if i use the show function on top of it category wise what is the count that's what it will return see kitchen category three products sports two electronics three furniture two so even group by is possible uh, this is all fine we are manipulating a data we loaded data into a data frame we are doing a manipulations using the functions in a PySpar. but how to save this data back into the files right so for that we have to use this write dot mode function so again all this PySpark related thing i have discussed in my PySpark video entire playlist here the focus is on a fabric so we are going uh, everything covering at a high level okay so write dot mode this mode function tells like how to write whether i have to overwrite it or create a new file something and then in which format i have to write right so here we are writing it in a parquet format so let me do that and let me show you that so my data frame has a data then i am going to write the data frame back using a mode called overwrite so i want to overwrite the information like if the data is already there then overwrite it then write it back into the parquet format and this time same write it into the files folder maybe data folder then maybe new maybe parquet data so that is the 
that, that's a folder where I wanted to write or, or maybe parquet data dot parquet. So you can give the extension also, but basically it will behind the scenes create a folder only. So inside the folder, it will create a parquet files. So if I give like this, don't assume that parquet data dot parquet will be the file. It's a folder inside that it will create a parquet files. So let me hit shift enter to run that and then we will validate whether it is really created a parquet files there or not. So let's wait for this command to run. You can see command executed successfully. And if I go back to my lake house and uh, as I said inside the data folder, I think I have created a folder called parquet data dot parquet file. So if you see here, see I got my folder created and if I go, you can see that even the data is available in the parquet file. So this file extension also will be a parquet file, but actually this is the file, but this one is just a folder. Okay, so that is one thing. So that's how you can write back the data. Not only that, when you are writing back the data, you can write based on a partitions too. So for example, my data has a different categories, right? Electronic furniture, kitchen. So I can partition this, all the electronic related rows into a separate folder. Then I, I can partition and save it. So when I do that, right? When you are querying that information back, that will be very like a performance optimized way of doing the things. Okay. So let me show you how to do that. So what I can do per data frame dot write, then I can say that partition by, so maybe partition by part P underscore category column. Okay. So partition by that category column and then save that data. Uh, maybe uh, I can use that mode function again. And I can say like maybe overwrite. Okay. Then I can say like maybe save the data into a parquet format. And this time again inside the files inside the data slash ABCD. So inside this particular path or maybe inside the uh, yeah, in, inside this particular path, maybe I wanted to just save the information. So now when I execute this, it will actually store all the data frame data, but by partitioning with a category. So I will show you that. So it, it successfully executed when I go to the lake house now and when I go back to this data folder and do the refresh, I should see a ABCD folder. You see that when I go inside a ABCD folder, you see category electronics, furniture, kitchen, sports, everything is a subfolders. And if I go inside the electronics folder, that's where you see a parquet file where all the electronic related rows will be stored. So basically we are partitioning the data based upon that category column values and storing them separately in a separate folders. Uh, and when you query that information back, it will be more faster. The spark will recognize it in a more faster because splits are already there. Now how to read this information back. So maybe I wanted to read this only electronics related or kitchen related files or the data there. Then it is very simple like how we do that right before spark dot read dot. So we should do the exactly same thing. So what I can do here is so I can write like spark dot read dot parquet file read dot parquet file and then to the parquet file path I can say under the files under data folder under ABCD folder uh, there is something called P underscore category column equals to kitchen. So that is a folder name right if you remember. So this is a folder name. So in that folder whatever the data is there take and give me back. That's what it is saying. And when you give me back, so use a show function to show the results as well. So this is how you can read the partition information as well. And you can see we got only kitchen kitchen related information. You see that we got only kitchen related information. So that is how this entire the way we work uh, with the so that's how we work. I hope you enjoyed this video. So that's how we work with the data in Spark in Fabric. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.